Okay, in order to get to this coolant connector, you're gonna have to take a lot of things uh, off and you're gonna have to remove throttle body, the air box, the You're going to have to slide back the alternator. Just disconnect it from the top and kind of roll it back out the way. But first you got to um, un disconnect the cables on it. And you have to disconnect all the cables on the top side and the bottom. But first you got to take off the uh, upper intake. And so when right now I'm taking off the throttle body. And there's a little... Um, two bolts like on the bottom part of the throttle body that you can take off and that bottom part piece just drop down that way you can get to the back bolt on the throttle body and also you can uh, once you pull it back you can uh, take those cooling pipes the little small cooling pipes you can disconnect it right there and so it was kind of difficult until I figured it out but I didn't figure it out till I, when I got ready to put back put it back together and then I figured it out. But yeah, um so and you, you just got to remember where you disconnecting things from and so you won't have no problem when you get ready to go back with it. Make sure you have good lighting. See, I was struggling with it when I could have just took those two bolts off and that little bracket underneath the throttle body and it would have dropped down. I could have been took that uh, that pipe off there, but I was struggling with it. And so that's why I'm letting y'all know. Pull it back. Disconnect the wiring on it and... Uh, Really, you just got to push down on the release on the uh, wiring and just pull off, pull it off the throttle body. And when I was going back up with everything, I did clean the throttle body. And so the vacuum lines, you can leave them connected to the uh, upper intake if you like. But you just got to remember where you. Um, disconnected it from it was time consuming that's why I, sp I, speed, I sped this up so you can um, kind of talk through it and I did this over a span of maybe three days because uh, I was spending an hour a day Kind of messing around with it. And I know at the top of that I took off the um I'm still trying to take that upper intake off. It's connected on the side over there. It's a bolt over there, but a simple kind of bracket to keep it in line. When you're disconnecting the um, the starter, um, you can, it's a bracket underneath that intake. Well, not that intake, but up under the other intake that you can, two bolts, and you can kind of move that, uh, move it back out of the way, and then you get to the bolts on the starter, and that was, that's part of the intake, a little bit, a little block with the uh, that the water line is running through. And what else? Idle control valve, I just remove. And see, yeah, I am struggling up underneath there. I'm disconnecting wires. Pretty much when you go back 
put everything back together. The wires that's running from the top of that wiring, wiring, wiring harness goes to the top, and there's some wires underneath it, and they go to the more the bottom thing. See that um, the starter wires right there, connectors. You got to move that bracket out the way so you can get to them under there, underneath there. I found that lower intake, and I was trying to get to the point of taking off that lower intake, but after I step on it a day, I thought about it that I can get to that area as long as those wires was, was loose up under there and I had the space to kind of move that, that wiring harness around, you might be able to just disconnect everything and just lay it back out the way. That way you can reach your hand in there and get to those two bolts that's connected to that coolant connector. And you did disconnect, I mean, you uh, loosen those two bolts and take them off and now here, right here, I'm draining the water, uh, the, the coolant from the uh, the engine, trying to get it lower than the area where I'm working on. So that way I won't get a lot of fluid. And see, I removed that, um, I removed that filter housing lid and I was able to get my arm up in there without removing the lower intake and pull that hose up out of there. But I had to disconnect it off the back wall. You got to kind of wiggle that hose and see where it's connected at on the back wall somewhere and take that, uh, disconnect it from that, that area. So when you get ready to, it's a couple of areas you got to disconnect off the back wall, firewall, or to connect it to the back of the engine, somewhere back there. But you move it around so you can see where it's located at. Wiggle it and then you know where you need to disconnect it. And there's one running from the bottom of the radiator up on the, there to another inlet on that uh, hose, connector hose, and you disconnect that also. That way, when you do that, you can reach your hand in there and pull, pull out the whole connector with the hose, that back hose connected to it. And it's easier than pulling off that whole um, lower intake. Which if you want to do it, you can do it. But I didn't want to take pull off the lower intake. I just reached my hand in there and just pulled out the um, the connector with the hose on it connected to it. Make sure you have plenty of lighting so you can see down in there. Probably putting my hands in there, removing the screws. I try not to drop them down in the engine because I did. I had to get me a magnet and kind of fish them out of there. But it gives you a little space when you move, remove that uh, filter housing uh, cup and just put something over the uh, filter housing so you won't, won't drop, drop, drop a lot of dirt and grind seat I pulled it out of there and so now after I pulled it out of there I'm gonna go ahead on and uh, start putting it back together in a little bit but right now I'm looking at the hose trying to clear it out and the hose had broken off into the engine it had broken off into the side of the engine and what I did was spray some PB blaster in there let it soak for about a minute or two and start getting my screwdriver and kind of digging it out of there. Trying not to scratch the side walls up, but it, it started coming out a lot easier when I sprayed that PB blast in there. And then I got my Dremel and bought me uh, a brush to put on the end of it. And what I did was put the Dremel in there to kind of polish it up in there in, in the inside of that and the outside of the uh, where the area uh, connects for the water hose connector, for the water line connector. Yeah, but it came out in pieces and I try not to let anything drop back into the engine. But yeah, I 
I got it all out. I should have showed uh, uh, how clogged up it was with, you know, with the, uh, from the connector that had broken off into it. And the first, when I first saw it, I was like, oh man, how am I going to do this? But once I sprayed that PB blast on it and let it set for about a minute, it started just coming out on its own pretty much. But I just used the, uh, like I said, the screwdriver just to kind of pick it out around it and pry it out of there. And pull out as much as like you can with your hand when you put your hand in there. So I got a wire brush and, and start scrubbing around it with the wire brush on the outside of it. And then I vacuumed as much as I could out of there. And did some more scraping and, and going around with the wire brush. And go back, vacuum some more out of there. And then I got my Dremel eventually and put the Dremel in there and just kind of went around in the inner portion, inner part of that, that uh, opening, opening and uh, on the outside of that smoothing it out and so I wiped it down and um Okay, next I got the new one and laid the new one beside the old one and you need to make some markings on and make a note of mental note of how the hoses are turned and how to position on the so you can put it on the new one this in the same spot in the same way it's connected onto the uh the old one. So I used some type of um, some type of sealant on that um, on it. So when I reconnect it back, it has some kind of sealant. I put a little bit on the threads, not that much on the uh, hose where the hose is going to be going on, sliding on. So I put a little bit around it so it won't be leaking because I do not want any leaks. After I put everything back together. And so looking at the holes, you got to try to remember how it's laying, how where it's connected at, and and which way it's turned. And try to put it back in the same spot. And when you uh tighten your clamps back on, make sure you tighten it in a way that you can reach it from without take, taking the whole engine I mean taking the whole intake out the upper or the lower intake out if you could reach in there and remove that hose off there without having to break everything down that's a good day for you 
Because if you can't get to that that hose connector or the clamp and loosen it, then you got to take it all out down just to get to it. That's a long day. So make it easy for yourself and put the clamp on in a way that you can reach it from the front. You might have to use a long extension screwdriver or something like that. Uh, extension socket to get to it but at least you can reach it and you can pull that that hose off from the by reaching your hand and thereby first you remove that um like i said an oil filter um cup lid and you can kind of put your hand in there give you a little space to reach your hand in there and uh pull it out of there So you put your holes back on the same way it came out the other one. Now I'm putting the sealant behind the, the seal, the rubber seal, and next to the flange, the flat area. And really you could just go around it one time, but I put it on there twice. I just overdid it because once I put it back it was kind of hard to push back in there because it had so much uh, sealant around it so I guess one time is enough along with the seal and you tighten it up that way you won't have no more leaks yeah I, I overdid it But I think it, it still was a good idea to do it this way. And it sealed it and I, I don't have any leaks now. So you got to fish it back in there and try not to get your silicone your silicone on anything you know pick up any dirt while you're pushing it back in there and pull it from the other the holes from the other end and help you stick it on in there and then while you're doing that you can go ahead and once you get in it you can sit it in place 
and snug, put some bolts on it and snug it in, in place. You might have to push on the, the area where it goes into the engine and hold it while you snug those bolts. Make sure it's flat down in there. Make sure you have good lighting so you can see what's going on down up in there. It's like surgery. <laughs> it would have been so much easier if I would have just poured the um, a lower intake off, but I didn't want to do that. I'm trying to figure out a better way. So here I am filling the coolant, uh, the radiator back up with coolant, and I let it sit overnight before I did that so it could kind of everything can seal up good without the fluid and then I added the fluid the next day I just sit up for over I guess 8 to 10 hours and didn't have any leaks at all everything was dry that way you could go head on and get the air out of the system and you can start it up. So I'm checking for leaks. It was dry. No drips, nothing. So I had to put everything back together after that. There we go. Thanks for watching.